Ethereum stakers may soon be able to withdraw their Ether from the Beacon chain, with Ethereum devs aiming to deliver the long-awaited upgrade this quarter. So what does this mean for the ETH price? Is it going to tank or will it rally? Back in September last year, Ethereum switched from proof of work to proof of stake. Under proof of stake, block creators are called validators. A validator checks transactions, verifies activities, votes on outcomes, and maintains records. Under proof of work, block creators are called miners. Miners work to solve for the hash, a cryptographic number, to verify transactions. In return for solving the hash, they're rewarded with a coin. To buy into the position of becoming a block creator, you only need enough tokens or coins to become a validator on a proof of stake blockchain. A validator must deposit 32 ETH, roughly $48,000 right now, to run a dedicated staking node on the proof of stake blockchain. And for proof of work, miners must invest in processing equipment and incur hefty energy charges to power the machines attempting to solve the computations. Proof of work mining is seen as an energy waste and not eco friendly, although that may not be true with how some of these mining rigs are actually being powered, like through geothermal energy coming out of the ground in Iceland, but it is still perceived badly by the mainstream. With Ethereum switching to proof of stake, it's seen as better investment for institutions who want to appear eco-friendly. The merge kicked proof of work miners off the network, reducing Ethereum's energy consumption by more than 99.9% and new Ether issuance by nearly 90%. Ethereum's switch to proof of stake was good for the supply as it switched from being inflationary to neutral slash deflationary depending on the day. We can see if Ethereum hadn't changed to proof of stake, there would already be another 1.4 million ETH in the supply in only 122 days. When Ethereum stakers originally put in their 32 ETH to become a validator, they didn't know the exact time it would take to be able to get it out. There were just guesses that it would be one to two years. As we've gone into this bear market, people have become increasingly impatient with their funds being locked, while the Ethereum Foundation kept pushing back the date for when the ETH would be unstaked. Because of the backlash, the Ethereum core developers decided they need to prioritize getting people's funds unlocked for them as soon as possible. They decided unstaking would become available with the next upgrade, which is called the Shanghai Upgrade. The release date for the public testnet of the Ethereum Shanghai Upgrade has been alluded to happen by the end of February. And in the most recent all core developers call of 2023, it was noted that in order to make sure that developers can reach the March deadline, they want to release a public test network for the Shanghai upgrade by the end of February. They also set March as a tentative target for the highly awaited upgrades to go live on the mainnet. In the meeting, the Ethereum devs reaffirmed their commitment to prioritizing withdrawals for the next upgrade. They agreed to remove all unrelated changes or Ethereum improvement protocols from the Shanghai codebase to minimize the risk of delays. Now that we know that Ethereum will most likely be able to be unstaked around March, will this be good or bad for the price as people with 32 ETH locked up will now be able to access it again for the first time in two years. We have to remember that a lot has happened in two years. The market has gone from euphoric rallying to unfortunate crypto blowups every other week. Look on Chain tweeted that with the coming of Ethereum's Shanghai upgrade, some investors worry that opening staking withdrawals will put selling pressure on ETH. Saying, we analyze investors who deposited less than 5,000 ETH and the average price they deposited ETH to the Beacon Chain contract is $2,260. With Ethereum sitting around $1,550 right now, that's a pretty big loss from where they deposited. At the same time, tokens powering various liquid staking protocols are enjoying a hefty rally. Lido Finance and Rocket Pool have already had significant gains over the past week. Liquid staking derivatives are a type of derivative contract that allows users to stake their assets in order to receive a return on their investment. These derivatives are designed to be liquid, meaning that users can retain liquidity of their tokens even though they're locked on the blockchain. And this makes them attractive to investors who are looking for a way to earn a return on their assets without having to lock it up for a long period of time. And not everyone has 32 ETH to become a validator. Lido has become the largest liquid staking protocol with about 75% of the liquid staking market and 30% of all staked ETH in total. And last week was extremely rewarding for Lido as Lido Finance became the largest decentralized application in terms of total value locked, while dethroning DAI's creator MakerDAO. So we know that there's a big interest in staking ETH for short periods of time. Now, the Shanghai upgrade is designed to significantly reduce the risk and opportunity cost for validators to stake their ETH, as the minimum duration for staking will fall to just 27 hours. And it wouldn't be surprising to see even more people spin up validators after Shanghai, as they gain the peace of mind knowing that they can unstake their ETH more fluidly. So what will happen with Ethereum's price when this happens? It's hard to know for sure, but here is my best guess. If the price of ETH is anywhere close to the average lockup price of 2260 when unstaking becomes available, I think those who who have held for two years may want to get out and sell as the macro climate has changed drastically. This will cause a temporary sell-off of ETH, which I then think more institutions will begin to buy up large amounts of ETH to stake, and the price will then rally. If the price of ETH isn't close to the average of 2260, I think people will unstake and hold until around break even, and there will be a strong sell wall around the $2,200 price, as people want to at least break even after two years of being locked up. Now these are just my best guesses, who knows what will actually happen, but I'd love to hear if you guys have any other theories or plans to play the market when the Shanghai upgrade comes. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.